This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Hey everyone, it's time to get geeky talk tech. It is the awesome cast on Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter. Uh, here to uh, 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 cast the pods and such with uh, a, a, a huge lineup today. A great crew. There's so much going on. I, I understand there's been a couple of announcements. And mm-hmm. we'll see about if we can fit them into the show and touch on the rest of uh, news going on in the uh, tech gadget fun world. Anything else we've been playing with. Uh, first of all, uh, from Studio C, John Chichilla of ChillaTech.net. How's it going? Hey, Chilla. And also with us on the couch in studio is Katie Dudas of the Scarehouse Podcast. Kate Dudders on the Twitter. I'm here um, for the pizza and only the pizza. And she's here for the pizza. <laughs> Not so much the conversation. Nope. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then also with us, it's been a while since he's been on one of these shows. And he's been doing his own months. stuff. It's been a few months. And we thought we'd bring him back since E3 is a big deal this week and get another uh, opinion on uh, uh, probably the most avid of video game players amongst the crew. Uh, Shachi, Anthony Walker, IT extraordinaire, <clears throat> uh, and video game uh, player for the kids, Shachi says on the Twitter. Video game correspondent for Awesome Cast. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. And like I said, you can check out everything at awesomecast.net. Subscribe to the show. On so many places, I'm going to stop listing. So just look for Awesome Cast wherever you find podcasts and videos. If it's not there, you can let us know. We'll put it there. Uh, you can tweet us about that at Awesome Cast, Awesome Cast at SorgatronMedia.com, Awesome Cast on the Facebook. We have a, a, a Facebook group as well where you can talk about stories, we share stuff throughout the week. And we have any questions or anything, you can pop that in there as well. Or just hit us up with questions uh, as well on, on, on Twitter. Um, I know I know Nero is out there uh, asking us about. about uh, Pebble versus Fitbit or something before uh, he answered his own question. Uh, but, uh, you know, it gets out there. But uh, so uh, thanks for everybody that's uh, corresponding with us on there. Also, uh, check us out here live every Tuesday, live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, somewhere between the 6.30, 7 o'clock uh, time period, Eastern time, we get started uh, with our good friends in the chat room. Like Crazy Krause, who's uh, moved on from Windows Phone. Much like the rest of the world, and move into the Samsung Edge, much like the rest of the world. Uh, so hanging in there with with uh, wheels as well as uh, our uh, cast and crew from this evening's on the show, and Missy, wife of the show, uh, doing the show notes and such all night long for the awesome cast. Oh no! no. Check us out also Thursdays 8 a.m. Oh, after no. Funny Money. Oh oh no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> on uh, uh, Thursdays, 8 a.m. after Funny Money on the Rivers Edge dot um, Rivers Edge PGH dot com. Excuse me. And thanks to our friends that are following us on Patreon, Patreon dot com slash Awesome Cast. This will see business development up in Cranberry, PA, and the Mike Fedor Show, uh, Mike Fedor Show on Twitter as well. Check them out. Thank them for being Patreons of the show, and you can join us as well. Patreon dot com slash awesome cast or just share the show rate the show however to get uh the word out there and check out the awesome chat as well we've been having some great interviews we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk to extreme pogoing people on that show in the very near future and we've been talking 8-bit evolution i know chachi you guys have been looking into those local guys as well we had a great interview uh with james from over there uh last week on awesome chat so go look that up as well so, so this is the one I, I can't wait for Chachi's commentary on this. I know you're mostly the E3 guy, but he's also the Android fellow in the room. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> all right, all right. So, just go ahead and tell me everything Apple is catching up on. All right, have you caught any of the news? I'm curious to see. Was there no. anything that caught your attention? Here's the thing: I don't, I ha- don't pay attention to anything Apple does. Okay. Um, mainly because of the whole uh, failure to cooperate with the FBI. Oh. No. oh. Um, 
I, I will not uh, cooperate with, or I will not pay attention to Apple. I don't willingly use their product. Okay. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I carry an iPhone, but that's because I'm required to carry it, an it, iPhone. It has been forced upon you. All right, yeah. we'll get we'll get this out of the way, and we'll get into the video games for you here. So uh, uh, please please refrain your groaning as much as possible for us. <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dissent. I will actively participate in the conversation right. as I can. All right, uh, Chilla, I'm gonna go to you uh, uh, on this one. What what is? Well, I guess we can go a little bit of what was your awesome thing of the announcement. So, so the one thing I was interested in from the announcement perspective, and it's one of their newer products, is what they were going to do with Apple TV. Mm-hmm. Um, interestingly enough, they announced day of Sling TV finally was coming to to the Apple TV, which is great news for cord cutters. Um, so now you can load that app right on your Sling TV and be on your merry way. Um, <clears throat> they had a, they had a couple other ones. Uh, a couple other pieces of news. They're getting a dark mode. They're getting some more Siri integration. Um, Siri is going to search additional content like Netflix and YouTube, which I would thought was pretty cool. But my actual favorite one of the of the whole WWDC from from an Apple TV perspective was single sign on. Um, I've seen this across all kinds of devices, not just Apple related. Constantly having to sign into different companies front ends for watching tv um so you know how you have to click i am a verizon fios or comcast or time warner or whatever um and i want to use the fox app or i want to use the espn app or i want to use whatever app um hbo is another big one um they are going to do single sign on across apple tv and ios so if you sign on on ios to one app it's going to automatically sign you into the rest and then carry that forward through to Apple TV. Um, I find it rather cumbersome, like I said, no matter what, what device I'm on, to constantly have to, to sign into different services. So to me, this, this is a huge one. I don't know if you see this with Hulu and WWE and whatnot across your, across your devices. I'm interested in this, of course. You know, I'm 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 an Apple TV world as well, and and that's that's the thing that keeps me from like checking out some of those other channels is is that lack of single sign on. I have apps that have been sitting there like, oh, I want to check this out and 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 see some shows in there, but to, just the go. I I've yet to set up my Plex app because I just anytime I want to, it's like oh, I gotta go grab my laptop. You know, it, it is a pain in the butt. Um, I think that's gonna be a, a real good, a real big barrier drop for for something mm-hmm. like this like i i love the idea they're saying that you can log in with your your comcast or whatever and it'll say here's everything you have access to because you know they don't have all the deals with everybody right like i think i think i was playing with stuff uh, uh with with direct tv and and it doesn't apply to like disney xd so i can't check out the new ultimate spider-man or anything like that right um or hbo didn't work with everybody for a while either so it's 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 it, I, I think that's going to be really nice for that and turn it more into a tv channel ish device you know which also makes me think remember they're always talking about how apple was supposed to get like some kind of deal kind of like the playstation tv kind of like sling and that never really happened um i i I look at something like this and i'm like well do they really need it to at this point i i think with this and i think i think the final the, the the final piece and part of this will be um, I, I know Verizon had created and they've recently discontinued their Xbox application that allows you to watch on Xbox, Xbox One, a majority of your your cable stations live. I think if they could port those types of applications over, um, I, I think that's that's going to be the, the kind of finishing move. And I, and I think there's going to be enough competition in the cable box arena up and coming since the i think it's the fcc wants to deregulate uh cable boxes and spawn more competitions i'll I'll believe that when i see it i just any comment of of the cable boxes will be revolutionized in the future is like i i don't believe it at all (laughs) yeah i don't care what the fcc is passing out there and i i know it's supposed to open it up but I, I just don't see it catching on. So I, I just don't see I don't I don't see Motorola keeping up and being able to continue to be the sole provider for the majority of, of boxes around the world. No, no, just enjoying that 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 uh, fifteen year old uh, American scientific box that uh, just keeps getting upgraded, right? So 
Uh, aside from that, no, I, I think some decent upgrades to TV. Um, you know, they're you know more Siri, but Siri's still kind of limited to to what it is. Um, I was interested, and of course, let's let's go down the line of what what they did talk about here. Uh, of course, the I guess kind of the big cosmetic thing is that uh, OS X is now going to be Mac OS to kind of fall in line with the naming scheme for everything else. Plus, it was kind of weird saying an OS X ten since the X is supposed to be ten in the long run, right? Um, Sierra is their next one, um, so going along with that, so. Uh, I'm, I'm glad they're not going like like 2016 or something like that because I actually kind of hate that on like Photoshop, you know that 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 it's like you know that updated version like that's how they're how they're calling it lately. Um, iPhone is getting. I was interested in iPhone's um, notifications. The idea that uh, you are, you're going to be able to raise your phone up and it's going to pop up your notifications. You're going to be able to 3D touch. There's something you can do with 3D touch. Uh, to actually interact with messages right in your notification screen, uh, it seems like a pretty good concept. It does seem like a good concept, and it's interesting because I think we're not going to see much, as much as we would for three D touch for probably another year or two. Once the cycles get through for every phone being sold has three D touch out of the box, right? I think there's a lot of companies that are reluctant. I'll be honest with you. I really like the Instagram features. I really like the Twitter features. Um, I work with some third-party vendors that, that we use their products where I work. Um, and I've actually asked them to to put in 3D touch capability because mm-hmm. a lot of their apps are segmented. And I, there's four sub-segments of the app. I'd like to be able to quickly jump to those sections. Um, so I could see more common in the way of 3d touch and i think this is just the tip of the iceberg i i keep forgetting it's there i just keep forgetting it's there Mm -hmm. i've been using this phone for a while okay do you have the same issue yeah 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 it's the same thing it's like it's like 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 i get that like revelation i'm sitting there and like i'll read an article and they're like oh 3d touch this app is doing this and i'm like oh that's right and i'll start poking at some of my apps and see what they can do now but that doesn't retain you know, and uh, but but this idea that it could happen just right there on your notification screen and, and they're showing some some, you know, some points here where like, hey, your lift here will be in five minutes. And you hit mm-hmm. the thing and it's actually using the app extensions and you see your lift car, you know, that thing that would be holding with the app open. I know these are such, you know, rough things to deal with. I have to leave my <laughs> app open. Right. Uh, you know, I, I, I think that's great. I, I, I think there was not revolutionary, but there's a lot of. Um, forward moving things that they were doing. Uh, oh, the opening up they've done, um, um, Maps is going to be opened up uh, some new stuff with the API. Uh, Siri, uh, the, was I saying on here or was I just saying that personally? It'd be really great if Siri actually opened up to apps to write to it. So I can say, hey, call me a lift. Or, you know, hey, Siri, call me a lift. Or oh, sorry, everybody out there. You know, you know things like that, you know, or, or, or mm, Siri, um, 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 you know, give me a reservation with open table, you know, like that kind of interaction, which, you know, we're seeing already a little bit on Android with the way that they're, they're interacting those things, but everything has been so siloed here. So it's nice to, them, to see them finally getting around to that. Um, messages. Mm-hmm. I, I've had the screen up here for a little bit on video. Um, I have a feeling and at, considering how many, um, uh, bit emojis and stuff I get from, uh, Missy and Katie here. Uh, I have a feeling this is going to blow up my my uh, uh, messenger a bit here. Confetti, confetti. There's fireworks. I this is all like goofy, like cosmetic, weird things. Um, you know, but but the 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 uh, the, the scratch away secret message I thought was interesting and, and and it was all like just these weird examples and then they're going to open it up and people can add their own badges and 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 weird and you know whatever straight into messenger um which again you know look at this it looks like um you know this looks more and more like facebook messenger to me mm-hmm. right which yeah oh my gosh a lot of them are starting to look similar at this point um stickers great another place we can put stickers yay and they were saying like like stuff like like jib jab is going to be integrated <laughs> you know like that's like the kind of app extension kind of stuff which the app how, how old are app extensions like you're old two two years old it was, was it os eight or nine chilla it came in, I think, with eight. With eight, so 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 this is kind of just the maturing of. And Apple. then they 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 opened it up even more in nine, where 
So, so you got extensibility, and then I think they did some stuff where you could actually what was it? You could grab something in photos, but then pull the photo into an a, a portion of an app mm-hmm. in nine. So like fo- uh, camera plus was a big one. You could open up a photo and say, edit in camera plus. It didn't actually fully launch all of camera plus. It just gave you a section, the, of the, 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 a, a portion of camera plus for editing the photo. It's not going to let you, it's not going to take you into the camera portion of that app, but it's kind of pick and choose what you want to do with it. Speaking of photos, hmm? Speaking of photos, yes, major upgrade in photos there. Yeah, so yeah, it's going to be more like uh, Google Photos, which mm-hmm. hey, that's not a bad thing. We got um, facial recognition because I know I have a whole pile of photos that it takes me forever to find I, anything. You know, on. I I used to sit there and in sections and and sit through the uh, the old iPhoto had the facial recognition. Mm-hmm. We're like, yeah, that's per- that's that person. That's that person. That's that. I don't even know if that, that it retained that data when we upgraded to, to, yeah. to Apple Photos, right? <laughs> and I guess it's not even going to matter anymore, mm-hmm. um, the grouping. Because I, I really do like how, you know, I take pictures everywhere I go, out on shoots, out on, you know, trips, mm-hmm. out on this stuff, on, out on events. And, and the remembering to go back and post the things to Facebook. But Google Photos will say, hey, we got your trip going this place this weekend, this this weekend in in Rochester, New York or whatever. Right. And I pull stuff together and it's like, here's the best stuff. Um, something that at least stepped me. I was like, oh, yeah, I do need to go through that. And it's just kind of pruning that a little bit mm-hmm. before you put it out or the little videos that they do for you. Uh, we were playing with the GoPro Quick app as well. Um, you know, to see that happen like right in in Apple is nice. We'll see how well it works. Um Montage. Uh, montage. <laughs> you love your montages. Love your montages. Um, but yeah, and, and I'm sure they'll have hooks to send that straight out to Facebook, Twitter, whatever you want to do as well. Uh, so since everything's pretty shareable across Apple these days. But um, no, I, I, and again, yeah, it, it's kind of catching up with everybody else. But again, you, you get to kind of stay in that ecosystem. If if maybe you're not a Google fan or something, right? Uh, me, I have no problem. I actually don't mind making sure my photos are in like two or three places, you know, um, as long as I apparently download the Moments app and they don't delete my mobile uploads on Facebook, which was kind of a crappy thing that came out this week. <laughs> but yes. Um and uh, from that, uh, sorry, I had a weird message. Um, anything else, uh, uh, iOS, Katie, Chilla, that, that, that you saw that really kind of stuck out? From an iOS perspective, I'm super excited about the HomeKit integration. I was um, waiting for that one. Yeah, exactly. I, I didn't feel like the the developers did justice to, and I, I have the same problem because I run ios android and windows and, and mac os around the house and it's it's something that no one's doing real well everyone's leaving it up to the developer and no one developer has done that great of a job i think the home app has done a pretty good job but i think it would, they needed to step in and push it forward maybe they'll re- relinquish that over time um, but i'm i'm really excited about um that one um as well as um, the fact that you'll be able to remove pretty much any application from your device that you want to. I don't know if you caught that after the keynote. Yeah, um, right, after, right after the keynote showed up, every application pretty much from your iPhone um, showed up in the App Store as, as, as being downloadable. Um, so things like Compass, the watch app, um, remote um, there's a there's a number of them, um, and I actually put a link can, can, in the can show I delete, notes. Can I delete the phone further. app? Can I delete the phone app so people stop calling me? <laughs> you can't delete phone, but you can delete FaceTime. Yeah, that's, that'd probably be okay. Um, <laughs> and well, yeah, and also they're go- they're actually improving the phone. Um, there's going to be uh, uh, some more VoIP interaction with there. They're having extensibility ex- ex- extensibility to phone calls you receive that you can get visualize voicemail you know like like transcribed voicemail i know we've had that in google voice for a while but now i don't have to go into another app to do it um so again a lot of catch-up stuff but it'll be nice to, in the long run any point that the phone is doing it itself with iphone is usually better um for instance i was listening to google music and even their own podcast app um in the car and it kept you ever guys have that where, where your iphone's plugged into something and it pops back to whatever your first um 
uh, song in your iTunes is. Oh my gosh. Like I'm so sick of listening to that one Z trip song that has a horrible beginning to it. Cause it's, a, and it was defaulting as I was uh, listening to uh, the Twit app, for instance, it's something about that connection to like the USB media iPod thing in a car. I think. Mm-hmm. Oh, mine does it. Yeah, it, it does it because the car actually start. It actually reads it as an iPod, and yeah. then kicks yeah. off the iPod app to tell it, "Hey, I want to start your first your your playlist." Yeah. And if you don't have a, a playlist, it'll it just starts going alphabetically through. Or if you don't use iTunes for music. You'll probably end up playing U2 because everybody downloaded the U2 song, the songs without knowing it. Well, so. here's the thing. Well, you can now delete, you can now delete the music app. So you can you delete the music app. app, but maybe not still the U2 songs. I say my mom, um, my mom has one phone, one song on her phone and it's been across the last two phones. It's uh, Mikey and Bob's Gobble Gobble Thanksgiving song. The only thing she bought on iTunes, right? Yes. Yeah. And every time she connects and it decides to be an audio connection. <laughs> it starts coming up couple 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 and then there's been points where it's come up like she, it, in in very uncomfortable situations where she has to explain what the heck this gobble because it, it's the turkey gobbles at the beginning because that's automatically what it does because it thinks it's an audio device and it's like mm-hmm, that's your first mm-hmm. song I, I i was actually trying to think i like i was almost to the point where i was like i'm gonna go on itunes and buy a song that's higher on the alphabetical scale just so i can hear something else it defaults to it's but- but, but I but I think this is interesting because this signals something to me. It signals a change that a lot of people have been asking for. Mm-hmm. If you're going to be able to delete mail, music, calendar, videos, FaceTime, notes, contacts, that means that you're going to be able – if you can delete those, you're probably going to be able to pick your own default. Oh, because something has – really, it's going to delete contacts? Or is that yeah, just – contacts gonna... is a deletable app right now. Wow. In, in beta one at least okay uh and they're in the store so if you go out and look at the the app store right now mm-hmm. contacts is a downloadable application because you would have to re-download these things they're not something that's yes. just there anymore kind of I'm like like podcasts were were podcast podcasts is back in the app store oh that's right podcasts were undeletable in this last version that's right yep. which is then it, it's still not the thing that default yeah, um yeah that's interesting well, okay. It's be uh, interesting to see where they take this, but I'm guessing this is kind of a, a, a something of of things to come. Hmm. I bet you, I bet you, a majority of the apps will still come default on the device. Mm-hmm. Still drives me nuts that Samsung ships their their internet browser is the is the default internet browser. I'd much rather have Chrome, but uh, again, it, I'm sure you're going to have you're going to have all these apps preloaded, but then it'll be up to you and you can remove them and then you can re-add them if you want. Mm-hmm. People that are thrilled about getting the space back, I find odd because apps like Watch and Voice Memos, I'm guessing, are going to get you back about a four or five meg. <laughs> I don't I, think we're I, talking I think it's, crazy I, amounts of space here. <laughs> I think it's more organization nuts saying I, I really don't want that taking up space on my phone. Like, I think there's some people that would be happy with, like, I just have one page of apps, no folders. It's everything I use. Because a lot of people, I, mean, I think most people don't use more than, you know, that probably more than that first page of apps. Typical people, right? That aren't downloading a bunch of games, experimenting with a bunch of different apps, right? Um, and to have to toss that in a folder, which we weren't even allowed to do for the longest time, um, or certain apps aren't able to. Um, I think I think that's more more the thing than space necessarily. It'll be it'll be interesting to see the first person that just removes everything and just installs Facebook and Messenger. That's it. You can fully have your. I mean, as it is, you look at the front of my thing and it's it have replaced with all the Google apps, right? Um, mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. as, as far as in those positions where there was Safari, there's Google Chrome. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, th- that kind of situation where there's uh, was Mail, there's there's Google Inbox for me. Um, you, you can you can kind of more fully do that now. Um, watch OS get some, looks like major minor updates. Um, they, 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 they updated some activity and breed app and all that kind of stuff. Um, they're going to pre-cache apparently the most popular apps on your, on your watch. So they load a little quicker, which sounds like it was needed. Um, any thoughts on that as our resident, um, Apple watch user here? I mean, I'm interested in to see how much faster they can make things load. And I, I use, 
I use a number of things on my watch, but I've never had a speed issue and I do use third party applications. I would like to see better implementations from companies like Twitter. You can have a, a, a number of actions and they only let you kind of favorite or dismiss notifications. I'd like to be able to retweet right mm-hmm. there. Um, I'd, like I said, I'd like to see more integration from the from the companies versus, yeah, it, it'll be nice to have. They're nice to haves. Um, I know it maybe it's a it's a us to go or yeah Google put in their next version aware that you're going to be able to scribble back responses. I don't care which watch you're on or whose watch it is. Um, I can't imagine myself scribbling little <laughs> responses back to text messages and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do use the defaults on both platforms where I can quickly say okay or. I'll call you back in five minutes and having those predefined responses, but I can't imagine typing out long form. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, like I said, I'm interested to see what it does. I'm interested to see what it does to battery life and see what it opens up for the next model of the watch. But uh, I'm getting, I can start my car. I can turn on my lights. I can, I can do what I need to do for my watch. It, it is no deep dive into the watch. That's the problem. And that, that's, that's what I'm finding. Like, I, I look at it. It's like that's nice, you know, the, the whole Apple Watch thing. But this this does enough, right? Um, for 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 my needs. So I don't know. Uh, Mac OS, real quick, and then we'll move on off the Apple stuff because I I'm not sure if there's anything else uh, really big. I, I mean, the big stuff's going to come in the fall when we actually have devices to attach all these things to, and and even like some public betas. I was excited to to realize I have some spare devices. Um. um that I can try some of this stuff out on. Oh, also sad that this, uh, my third generation, uh, iPad is also not on the list of things that are getting an update this year. Uh, so that's stuck. And, um, we're in, we're in that. So I have, I have just absolutely obsolete iPads and that's it around here. Um, I know first world problem, but, uh, Mac OS, uh, I really like the kind of synergy or what do they call it? Con- contingency, congruency. What, what, what do we call it? Any? Continuum? No, that's Continu- out. That's Microsoft. Yeah. Continuity? Continuity. Thank you. That's the word. Um, they had continuity and then Microsoft came out with continuum. So that, that's it does right. Confusing. Exactly. But, uh, I, I'm liking the, uh, universal copy and paste. Uh, the, the, I, I think this is an Apple apple watch exclusive feature but I, I don't see why they couldn't do it on with the phone itself the uh the uh the locational um, um unlock to your mac uh it seems like a nice a nice uh, uh touch uh siri coming to the mac and being able to search your files although i feel like that's kind of something uh, uh even windows was already doing with um with cortana does that seem right i don't know i haven't played enough with cortana though. i think it's it's doing that and so is google yeah what, so if, does Google Google will do that like in Drive or in, in, in the phone? I don't know if it'll do it on the phone. I, I've used it in their Photos app to say find me photos from Pittsburgh. Right, right. But and it and, does that. Um, this, I, I think I agree. This is the scary thing. There's some sort of data, like something about they were going to look through your temporary files and and the OS is going to decide what to delete. So this is if you use, yeah, if you use, if you use their cloud drive, what right. it doesn't decide what to delete. It, it, um, depending on how much free space you have on iCloud drive, it will actually go back and find larger, older files that you haven't accessed in a prolonged period of time and move them to drive. I don't think it's going to, formally delete that no no it just it just moves that off of your computer itself so like my 250 gigabyte drive gets a little bit more spacious um this is something i feel like i already do manually with google drive i like delete and re-download folders as i'm working on them uh because i have like a terabyte there and i have 250 on my on my uh on my computer itself so i have to do a little bit of juggling there um but this is also something that's already happening in the Photos app. It's deleting older older photos, and, and they're already up in the cloud. You can re-download them if you need them or something like that. Uh, 
I do, you have to have a lot of faith in iCloud or not have terribly important things going on, I feel, <laughs> to activate this thing. Although it is nice that you can say, hey, take my desktop where I put all my files anyways. And I know people that put all their files on desktop. And then I say, well, why don't you put that in whatever drive so that they will always be updated no matter what when this computer gets um I was going to say thrown in the toilet, but that doesn't work. Um, I, I think keep thinking of that Google Chrome uh, book video where they're throwing the, the Chrome book in a lake and said it's okay. But um, but I like I like those options. But again, I don't know. Do you trust them to manage your file? And version I trust checking? them as much as I would trust Google or Microsoft or anyone else. Someone has to write a sync program. Um, and said sync program has to synchronize those files and figure out upon what some people would call a replication conflict, how to resolve that conflict. Mm -hmm. The problem I think that all companies have is that they try not to prompt the user on, on said conflict and they try to figure out what to do. Right. I'd almost like to see like the old days when you were to, to, X copy a directory, it would prompt you and say, hey, this file already exists. Do you want to overwrite it and then mm -hmm. give you file information? They're trying to take that out of the equation, and I think that's, that that's just going to lead to more problems. Uh, Katie, you're, you're, you're rocking the uh, shiny new Mac over there. Uh, what do you think about these updates? Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a new round of updates. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I'm always up for a new round of updates, and it's just it's good and it's bad because it's just I feel like I'm always behind. Like mm -hmm. I feel like every time I like I I have never I've owned a Mac for t I mean ten years I think at this point, and I have never seen a constant update like this. I'm always out of date, and it's mm -hmm. kind of <laughs> it's great, but at the same time it's kind of like please can we keep it? Can I be okay for a month or so and <laughs> not tell me to update constantly? <laughs> Especially this yearly cycle that they've moved into. Yeah. What's funny because I feel like Microsoft's been has been monthly, mm -hmm. and all their patches come out monthly. Well, I think that's annoying, and that's one of the reasons I don't have a. Because <laughs> it's like, oh, we start, we're going to update. <laughs> we are moving that same thing. Because how many times didn't uh, that that happen to somebody? That that's happened a couple times leading to the, here on Tuesdays is a guest was coming on or one of you guys was coming on and it was like, Oh, uh, my Mac decided to update now, which is like, well, yeah, it's exactly the problem we had with windows. <laughs> yes. You know, I, I, how many times we get stuck with it. And we certainly still do even with windows 10. I, I've seen it on these machines down here. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, even the eight one over here. Um, and, 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 yeah, it, I, I feel were... like so. I'm I'm gonna call shenanigans, and I don't care what OS you're running on that one. <laughs> <laughs> there, every, I'm every sorry, OS I haven't a, seen has an option that says don't automatically reboot me. Automatic install applications at 3 a.m. on right. on Saturdays. Right. That, when there's a full moon like there is so much customization and option to that if, if they come into your studio and be like i got stuck in the middle of an update guess what they clicked on update then <laughs> like that that's a that's a load of crap that is fair <laughs> yeah. that is fair except the windows 10 update forcing of will i'm waiting to come down here and find out this thing updated to 10 that's why i'm going to willfully do it when i have time here to make sure it works or it doesn't work and make that decision so Microsoft, I've been putting it off. I was like, well, I'm going to do that, as we were talking about before the show. Um, I, but I also got to say, Ubuntu and, and, and Chrome OS have not imposed their will on me. So I just want to put that out there. You know, I'm rocking a, a cool, um, what is this, uh, version 12 Ubuntu over here. And it's not bugging me a whole lot for that. Um, hey, hey, you want to upgrade? I'm like, no, no. All right. That's cool. I'll ask you in a month. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's more, what, what, I mean, you know, I mean, Ubuntu is kind of the, 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 the gentle hippie of, of updating bugginess. Um, you wasn't knowing as crap as the updates is my darn phone. Update me now. Are you sure? Update later? You want to update overnight? Are you sure? Every day. It's like I hit it. And the worst part is when I'm trying to middle of doing something, I was trying to record a video earlier today and it was like, do you want to update? I'm like, because it was the first time I'd really gotten into my phone for the day. I'm like, no. I don't want to. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm waiting for Android updates tonight because because no one knows when they're coming out. I go out like every six hours and like update. Oh no, no update. 
All right. Well, that's most of WWDC. <laughs> they got some cool uh, stuff they announced for coding. Of course, this is a developers conference. So um, this, this is going to be just kind of the, hey, we're updating some stuff here. We'll get the whatever crazy innovations coming up uh, whenever they announce the actual phones and stuff. I'm sure it'll look exactly like the Samsung Edge that everybody already has by now. Um we were, were we talk, did, I, did I mention did I mention in the intro uh crazy kraus has moved on to the samsung edge or was that before the show because i know chachi's got one as well the, the wheels has one god everybody you guys i think they gave them out like when you leave your house in the morning samsung came around <laughs> is that what happened them, hands them out. <laughs> i mean you know I, i'm really i'm really pissed off that i didn't get it like a month and a half later that's what i heard <laughs> because there, now if you get one samsung will give you the uh the gear the VR. for free the vr gear yeah mm-hmm. yeah so had i waited like a month month and a half i would have they did that at launch too though mm-hmm. yeah i didn't get it at launch okay because it because depending on where you got i think like and, and at one point in time if you're a, i think if you're a verizon customer well you got a free 32 inch samsung tv what? Right. Yeah. I, what? I want, yeah. Yeah. We went with Sprint because they were buy one get one. No TVs, a Sprint apparently. No. But yeah, but I, you got a free phone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not truly upset. I'm just saying, damn. Had I waited a month, I would have gotten a free, a free uh, right, VR right. gear. Because we, we we always talked about it. like 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 the gear, <laughs> the gear is not something you were going to go out and 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 buy necessarily, right? Like no. this is like, but it was like. I got a VR headset that's not made of cardboard. Right. I mean, had it been free, yeah, I'd give it a shot. I'm not going to go out and buy it. Oh, I'm saying, these things are pretty cool, too. So, you know. <laughs> Dropped my pen. Oh, okay, is, that, is, is that where we're going? We all got to put on our headsets? Everybody, everybody, everybody grab your VR headset. <laughs> and the chill is going <laughs> to... Yeah, yeah. We're good. We're good here. We got this. Now he can't hear us. What? <laughs> No, he can't because he's, a, he's in VR world now. There you go. Is it on? Is it on? Hey, what's up? All right. I want you all to put on. I want you all to put on your VR headsets or stick your phone very close <laughs> to your face wherever this video is. Chachi, what do you got over there? Is that just a box? It's a, it's a plastic cardboard. <laughs> so, oh, that's right. You got like the spiffy one with plastic. Yeah, yeah. Look at you. Look at you updating there. All right. It you can. Like- it was like five bucks. Oh yeah, just put that on, or you can just put your mat, your close your eyes and put your VR of imagination on, and think about our friends at Slice on Broadway, sliceonbroadway.com. Our friends supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. I hope you still have your headsets on because I'm switching blindly because this thing's still in front of my face. Uh, uh, they've been supporting the show. Katie's in here to have some pizza, right, Katie? Oh, she wanted to get a pizza. See, I can't even see because I'm looking into the VR world of pizza. Um, but thanks to our friends out there uh, up here on, along the tracks here in Beachview. There, she's got it now. I made my VR reality. <laughs> yeah. she's, she can taste it. Chachi's, I, I was off camera, but Chachi's, Chachi's cardboard folded open on him. <laughs> yeah, it just flopped open. <laughs> He's got a floppy VR headset. Um... <laughs> But they've been supporting us, and uh, check them out. Uh, like I said, here in Beachview and uh, Main Street in Carnegie, PA, or down at PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, supporting us for a while. Well, I don't even know how long. It seems like it's been forever. Uh, thank you so much for them. Check them out. PGH underscore Slice on Twitter <laughs> or Slice on Broadway on Facebook and Instagram. Let them know. Awesome cast sent you. Wow, that was fun. Chachi. Yes. Chachi. Hold on, wait, time out. What? Are you going to put your VR headset back on? No, I, I we didn't do awesome thing of a week. No, no, I want your awesome thing of E3 though. Right. Well, I I bought a thing. You bought a thing. Whoa! I'm gonna hold him. I'm oh, gonna hold him up to the, the camera. He's got some new kicks. It's the oh. Vans but, uh, Nintendo. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, it's the Nintendo Vans. Um, I got the low top chucka with the uh, Mario print on them. Nice, uh, because nice. they were the least offensive pair. They are they are very colorful, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, the other ones are very colorful. There was apparently um, a giant Mario at uh, South Hills Village at the van store. Uh, in other news, I didn't know we had a van store in my neighborhood. Uh, neither did I. Yeah. Yeah, hey, yeah, me either, because I would have driven there instead of ordering them online. This is, is there any? <laughs> is there any Zelda ones? Yes, but they're horrendous. Oh, 
like it, it, it's it's just a, a collection of sprites in color printed all over the shoe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I was like, yeah, I like Zelda, but I don't want to make it look like it threw up all over my shoes. I'm like, <laughs> what you needed to do was a pair of high tops with triforces on each side. You hear mm-hmm. this, man? You hear this, man? I'm like, I, I do do a pair of tri- high tops with a triforce black. You're set. There, I did yeah. your job for you. Zelda shoes. How hard is it? This is probably like the most, the the most, the the. the, the this is where like all the geeks in the neighborhood found out there's a van store. Yep. <laughs> right. Uh, but awesome. So I mean, well, they're vans, so they're they're yeah. good shoes. But digging them, huh? Yeah, I mean, I I've only worn them a couple times because I don't want to get them dirty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those are <laughs> those are a special occasion. Those are the ones that you 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 wear to weddings. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I know that's the funny thing. Chris wants me to order another pair. Yeah. Uh, for our wedding. <laughs> that's awesome. Yes. <laughs> Wait, do all of us groomsmen have to get them too? <laughs> no, no. I mean, I'm looking but, for uh, an. I mean, I'm I'm looking for an excuse. I mean, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know. You don't need an. You don't need an excuse. They're vans and they have Mario on them. I mean, what the hell? <laughs> this is true. This is true. But I'm not. Um, a, I'm but, not a fancy shoe yeah. person. Anyways, E3. Well, no, me either. Like it took. It took Chris convincing me to buy them because sixty five dollars to seventy five dollars for a pair of shoes is something I don't spend. Yeah, that's not bad. I I, I spent thirty dollars at Walmart for two pairs of shoes that I needed for this trip, and they are comfy. They probably only last three months, but they were comfy. So that's that's my that's my range. Right, I'm hard on shoes, so I don't spend a lot on exactly, them. Exactly, but... exactly. Um, e three. E three. E3 is just going to burn holes in my pockets. <laughs> <laughs> well, and here's the thing. Like, I'm not really excited about a lot of stuff from E3, to be fair. To the, um, and also, to be fair, E3 hasn't technically started. It's just a couple of the press conferences. Right. <laughs> um, it, so, I mean, it's right nothing. Sneezing pizza. It's sneezing pizza all over the place. Sorry, guys. Oh, lovely. She sneezed. But I, I, I have a, a few notes from the major... The, the major announcements that have been out. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I only picked a few because I didn't want to dwell on all of the announcements of every game that was released because this isn't the place for that. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the highlights for me, of, of course, uh, uh, the new Xbox, um, the Xbox One S and the future coming Project Scorpio. Um Joe, I saw that you had that in the notes. Yeah, and it's it's one of those things. It's it's, it's do I get the second Xbox? Do I get the <laughs> S? <laughs> yeah. Do I save the hundred bucks and not get the S and get the current? You know, I do was I listening to Corpio? like our friend Malengo was on Core Killers again this week, and they were talking about like like the multiple console console thing, and the one guy was like was uh, Ryan Brush was like I like like. I really wish I didn't have to turn on one of my other many consoles to do to, and, and, and not have the same apps across all of them and stuff like like, you know, it's that space. Right. Well, and then, and then but then look at it and I don't want to jump ahead, Chachi, because I don't I don't know what you have come up next. But like I looked at the, the Spider-Man game and Resident Evil being fully seven being fully play to, playable on PlayStation VR. And I'm like, mm-hmm. should I scrap the idea of a second Xbox and just go PlayStation and have different consoles in different rooms? I, there's a lot of, like I said, E3 is really burning holes in my virtual holes in my pockets at this I, point. You know, that, that, that's a factor because if you're like, am I really ideally going to get the Vive set up and dedicate a room and do that whole thing, right? versus just get the PlayStation set up, which is going to be much cheaper in the long run, and give me a decent experience, right? Like, that's that's an option. Like, that's a serious consideration. Well, and here's the thing. I I, I think that decision is going to get a lot harder in the coming months because I have a feeling that Xbox is going to announce that the Oculus Rift is going to be playable mm-hmm. Right uh, through the uh, through the Xbox. That'd be amazing. Uh, and, then, and, and then and then Nintendo's going to announce their next console. Right. And then it's and then all the all the games that weren't EA and everybody that weren't willing to develop are now going to develop for it. Yep. But yeah. I'm going to get Zelda and Mario Brothers and everything else. Yeah. So it's going to be like so now I need to get three consoles. But no, you, you know Whoa. what the biggest it, difference is going to be the Nintendo is going to be VR with cardboard. <laughs> But I don't think I, mean, I don't think Nintendo's going to take take the cheap route out this time. I think you're no. going to see 
a hardware intense 4K capable gaming rig. I think that's why Xbox is going this route too. Because I, I think they don't want to be left behind again. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I mean, they were they were pretty much beat out of the gate by by play, by Sony this last time, and I, I think they're hearing things that we're not privy to, and so they're like, "Shit, we need to update. We need to update quick." Um, so I mean, with Sony with Sony going VR on pretty much everything that they're releasing, um, as as soon as October, I believe at three ninety nine. So, I mean, for the price of an Xbox 4, you can get VR. And I, I think they said like 30-some games right off the bat wow. are VR compatible. And that includes stuff like Star Wars, Final Fantasy 15, and Batman. I, and then the other big one was for me was Microsoft dropped their plan to put DVR capabilities in the existing Xbox One and any future state. They scrapped the project, which was sounded like from some of the stuff that I saw, it was pretty much done. Because they already have the tuner, and right. they already have they they already have the menuing system. All they needed to do was record to a hard drive, and they scrapped that. And that was going to be, I was going to start to go around, and instead of upgrade some of my TiVo boxes, I was going to put those in. So, how, I'm curious. I, we still need to do the the, the Chilla House tour, but how many TiVo boxes do you have? So I have, I have a. Um, like if you go current gen, I don't have any of the current gen models, but I have one current gen minus one and, and another current gen minus two. And then in another room, I have their stream, which can stream any content that's DVR to the two. One of the, the newer one has four tuners. The older one has two tuners and they both have hard drives. So I can tune anything off live TV and then I can DV, I can tune anything off the DVR, and because it runs the TiVo software, I get Hulu, Netflix, all your typical stuff. But I get it in the pretty user interface that everybody around the house is used to using. That's amazing. Um, and sorry. I have a stream box that allows me to stream content and DVR and move DVR stuff to my iOS and Android devices. Jeez. Um, and live stream, sorry. So 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 that I mean I, I don't know if you guys kinda I don't think you guys crossed over this conclusion, but it, it did get me thinking with this new Xbox and it's like, oh yeah, everything everything should forward and backwards should be compatible. But what if it does become like this is go- this is definitely a more powerful Xbox and there's another version they actually kind of partially announced too, right? What if one of these is going to be required for Xbox VR? Well, and here's the thing. They're, they're, they actually announced two different Xboxes. Right. Um, the Xbox One S, which is a slimmed down version of the current Xbox One. And then coming uh, next year is what they're referring to as Project Scorpio right now. Oh, and this is, the, is, this is the VR ready one. I, I'm assuming they didn't announce that it's VR ready, um, but they did away with a lot of uh, the connect functionality, like the, the new Xbox, it won't have a connect port in it. Um, and I don't think the, the Scorpio will either. Um, but the, I'm trying to find it, but they said flat out that the, the project Scorpio is made for um, 4k development. Okay. Okay. The, the other thing that I thought was weird too is they got rid of the some of the stuff for the connect port, but then they added the IR blaster on. Right. Yeah. So are they going to take the remnants of some of the control capability and just move it to the IR blaster? And then the, the controllers are getting Bluetooth, which to me says I'm going to be able to take my controller from a Windows device to my Xbox to potentially I've heard well, well to Android or iOS. Yeah, it's funny that you say that because one of the things they announced was Windows 10 and Xbox One full cross-play ability. Meaning if you buy a game digitally on one or the other, you can go to the other and pick up right where you left off uh, without any additional payment or issues. Wait, 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 wait. So sort of like yep. how I buy an app, I buy Sonic, 
I know. Sonic the Hedgehog on my iPhone and it works on my Apple TV, like that sort of situation? Yes. Yes. Wow. And the game saves are cross platform. So yeah, so you don't even have to start over. You can pick up exactly where you left off. So I can start snagging games on this Windows 10 laptop over here, and I'm good to go when Xbox One comes out. Right? Yes. Yeah, as, as long as they come out of the App Store, yeah. Is it, it, yeah. Okay, so they have the App Store kind of games. Like, is this a, is this going to be like new games coming forward? Are there games? Uh, okay, this okay. I did hear part of this announcement because like games like Gears of War four and some of the newer stuff's in there, right? Mm-hmm. So and aren't they doing the Call of Duty remastered or whatever? Right. Okay. And, and they said that all games will be playable on Windows ten, Xbox One, and Project Scorpio, so no one gets left behind. Wow. So what they're doing so what they're doing is they're moving to the Windows 10 model where it's right once deployed to many different right. different platform. And, and, and it's a brilliant it's a, it's, it's brilliant and and their their best I, I I like how they're handling it. They know where their bread is buttered when it comes to this feature technology and it's cross gameplay. Right. That's amazing. That's that's. I mean, I, the Project Scorpio. I, let's go back that to that for a minute. It, it's slated at delivering six teraflops of computing computing capability and a true 4K resolution. So, so basically, what we're getting into, other than like the games are coming over the. Geez, that kind of blows that that one idea I had out of the water because I was I was I was thinking about how like obviously these games are going to step up and down from 4K and down like because they're going to be mm-hmm. backwards compatible. They've created kind of a legacy system here, right? So it's 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 sort of like I'm going to buy this game. Like I can I, geez, I bought Quake, right? Quake will run on this computer with this specs. Uh, Quake will run on the faster computer with these specs and just a little bit better. It'll, it'll, it'll run on a slower one and just not as great as the other ones, right? So you at least have a base level things will look this good on your Xbox One, this much better on this, and now we have this whole other, like, oh, it'll actually work on PCs too. I- interesting. Because, I mean, it all it's all Windows in the long run, right? Right. I just, I just, I'm just wondering, so... Specific games have to have that cross compatibility because I mean you can't just take an Xbox game and throw it at Windows. There's a lot of cross compatibility stuff. Or they really iron those off, uh, iron, the, iron those over with uh, DirectX and everything over the last few years. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not as as deep into PC gaming as I used to be to know where that's at. Yeah, me either. Um, I don't know all of the details, but the future. Because I heard too that they're talking about bringing mouse and keyboard to Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Well, they are adding uh, additional USB ports, so that would make sense. So, so if you're a, if you're a desktop gamer and you wanted you didn't want to upgrade your gaming rig, you wanted to go move to the Xbox, and the reason that your gaming you stuck with a PC was because you liked the keyboard and mouse controls. You're now going to be able to bring those controls to the Xbox, and oh. By the way, vice versa, you can take if you're an Xbox gamer and you get a new PC that can handle the games or to your point, it can it just kind of steps down the game. Then you can take your Xbox controller over to your PC and play away. Right. So um, they also announced that Xbox Live is getting changes. Uh, They said that you can uh, start clubs, uh, post essentially want ads, and uh, they will be introducing tournament play where you can look and join tournaments based on whatever game uh, you happen to want it, uh, all basic uh, basis all based on availability um so let's see we covered sony vr xbox uh hideo Kajomi, kojima uh, basically gave Konami the finger and announced that he is doing a, piece, a PlayStation exclusive game starring Norman Reedus. Reedus? Reedus? Reedus. Whatever. Yeah, Norman Reedus from Walking Dead. According, um, according, my sister, a, according to my sister, that redneck heartthrob from Walking Dead. Yes. Um, they, they had a, a trailer featuring uh, Norman um, announcing the game. So, huge middle, middle finger to them. It's just, uh, they shouldn't have screwed that up. Uh, Ubisoft announced uh, Watch Dogs 2. Uh, 
Watch Dogs 2 and South Park Fractured Butthole uh, <laughs> coming in. No, it's, can I just point out that it's spelled B-U-T space W-H-O-L-E. Fractured yeah. Butthole. Oh, clever. Um, and it's the, the sequel to Stick of Truth, uh, available December 5th. Mm-hmm. And uh, sometime near, sometime around there, they will be um, giving out Stick of Truth um, also uh, for free. Oh, cool. Um, and the moment I was waiting for, uh, Nintendo finally announced and showed with gameplay and it's playable at E3, um, Zelda. The next Zelda game will be released in 2017, barring any delays. Yeah, because that'll never uh, happen. I know. That's why I, I'm excited, but at the same time, I'm not excited, because I'm just waiting for the moment that it's delayed. Um, it is Breath of, Breath of the Wild. It is a completely open-world Legend of Zelda game um, and it's already drawing some backlash that I'll get to in a moment, but there are side quests, uh, occupations and other tasks that Link can do. Um, and they said that it comes down to being as, um, decisive as, oh, well you can save the world now, or you can just wait and save it later. Um, as far as the amount of stuff that you can do. Hmm. Um, now it's already drawing backlash. Because while announcing it, um, one of the developers was asked uh, by an interview sometime around the the announcement why the main character was not female or why the the main character couldn't be selected as female. And they basically chalked it up to being that they're not going to introduce a new female character because they already have Princess Zelda. And if they made Princess Zelda a, a main character, what would Link do? Oh. So essentially so essentially, it came down to, well, we can't make it, make it female, because if it's female, what's the guy going to do? So, there you go. That's they can lock him in the dungeon and send Zelda in to, to save the day. <laughs> yeah, you know, but it's Japanese culture, so they can't really do that. It's a little gender role problem there, so I, I, right. I, I think it was just kind of not handled too great. So it, It's not that it wasn't handled too great, it just wasn't answered and accepted yeah. too great. Yeah. Um, because the, the interviewer knew what they were getting into, they knew what the answer was going to be, but they still asked the question. Yeah, they were fishing for it, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and so knowing- I mean... Yeah. Yes, it's not a good answer, but you were being a dick about it. Um, they also announced that the Nintendo NX, as it's being referred to now, will be available uh, March of 2017. Really? But Yeah, but that's all the details they gave. Wow. We'll find out on that day what it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I'm right. sure they'll have more yeah. uh, coming from E3 and leading up to the Those wacky Nintendo Direct videos. Oh, yeah. man. I can't wait to see the Zelda puppets. Anyways. <laughs> um, but they're also having a Nintendo eShop sale mm-hmm. um, on a lot of the Zelda and Pokemon games as we speak. So if you're interested in that, you can go and pick it up if you have a console or a 3DS. Um, no mention of Pokemon Go in the Nintendo Direct. Son so, no no release date, no update. Um, essentially, it was like they gave that company the finger and said, no, buy your own time. <laughs> so Wow. <laughs> Take that, Niantech. Niantech. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's that's what I have for me, three. Mm-hmm. Oh, so again, this is the first year I haven't gone headlong into E3 to see what's going on. So, yeah. Um, but it, it, it's interesting to see. I, I'll probably keep an eye out uh, through the week and see what games are coming up. Uh, so, what? Resident Evil in VR. Did you see that? Oh, in, in VR. VR. Oh, scared the crap out of me. Not in VR. A little. Apparently, <laughs> and apparently, there was a reference in the trailer. Um, there was some sort of. I think it was Kitchen. Yes. Was the the VR demo that they showed before for mm-hmm. PlayStation? Um, and they said that was really, really pushed the creepy factor. So, 
I'm curious if there's the so they're saying they're releasing these games like like Resident Evil Seven. That's going to be like I can get in VR, but I can play it regular, right? Mm -hmm. And we, I'm curious to see how they handle that because we've seen early stuff when they were bringing over like Team Fortress Two when Valve was playing with VR. They brought over that. They brought there was something else. They like Half Life. I think they tried. No, not yeah, Half Life. They did. I think try. And they talked about how they couldn't port that over directly because just the mechanics don't work in VR, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so like, like, what does it do to the gameplay? You know, um. I, I feel like it kind of akins to like Super Smash Brothers. You could play it with the Wii remote, but you wanted to go get a Game GameCube controller in the long run, right? Like like that gameplay is still different, mm -hmm. you know, between the two. So I'm curious to see what that is. Yeah. All right, uh, thanks, Josh, for um, um, talking E3 with us. Um, is there anywhere uh, you're going to be talking E3 this week? Uh, we will be live tomorrow on Boss Battle. Um. Which is uh, available on Google Plus. We usually send a Twitter link and a Facebook link, I believe. Okay. Um, so you can check it out there. All righty. Uh, go look up Boss Battle. Uh, it's on the. Uh, it's still on the Insert Coin uh, to begin YouTube page, right? Yes, correct. All righty. Go check it out. Uh, him and Bobby and Riz uh, talk games and catching up with that. So um, there was some other big social media news. I think we need to touch on. I know. I know. You know. Everybody loves LinkedIn. Yes. <laughs> or, it's, or it's a necessary <laughs> evil in their in their professional uh, presentation. Uh, I was have, having a discussion today about LinkedIn and how while well, you're putting stuff on LinkedIn, I'm like, yeah, I guess I have to, <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, apparently, LinkedIn has been uh, purchased by Microsoft for some ungodly amount. Uh, cash. 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 <laughs> cash money. Cash money. <laughs> Wow, I I don't know. Yeah, if, 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 if for, for for those people who don't think LinkedIn's a big deal, um, it's 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 multiple billions of big deals to someone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to find the number here, uh, and I know we twenty three point six twenty three point six million bill. I think it's billion. There's a B. That's a B? Yeah. Zillion? Z <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, 26 billion. Bitcoins? Yeah, Bitcoins. billion. Billion Bitcoins. Doge? <laughs> so I, I, I think the, and this was brought up on, on our show, uh, I thought it was interesting, because that also includes lynda.com, which is a fair, which got bought by LinkedIn yeah. <laughs> about a year ago, I, th I think. It's been bugging me for that free trial ever since. Um, and I'm like, no, I've, I've, I've been, I've been, at lynda.com. I know what it's about. I don't need it right now. Thank you very much. Um, but I, it's, it's, it's interesting. I, I, I don't know what they'll do to integrate. It's another property for them. Uh, so, so one of the things that I thought was interesting is if you look at back at old versions of outlook, mm -hmm. um, which obviously a lot of enterprises running, one of the features that was in there originally, but quickly, was removed for some reason was you had the ability to install a LinkedIn plugin. So anytime you got an email from someone, it would add their LinkedIn avatar and you could hover over and see pertinent information about that person. That seems um, handy. That, that being said, the other thing that I've noticed on a number of occasions in attending, um, different symposiums on, on different topics, a lot of time, the MC or presenter of the person or, or person introducing or introducing the, the, the keynote speaker or whatnot, you can tell they pulled the intro directly from bullet points on their LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. wow. So I, I will say in business, it's probably used more than we realize. Oh, certainly. I, it's absolutely. There's, there's, there's people Especially business, business to business, um, it, it is their Facebook at that point, right? Um, mm -hmm. and, and it is. And I, 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 I kind of joke, but no, I, I seriously think Facebook is important. And again, I, you know that that philosophy. You don't do LinkedIn for uh, the, what you what you need today. It's for that job you need in the future, right? Um, so I think it's really important to at least pay some attention, update that thing because that is kind of 
you know what what do you look like when you what do you look up when you meet a person you look up a facebook page and their linkedin profile and uh that that's pretty important for for that kind of stuff well, one of the things that that surprised me and i can't find the actual article but someone was telling me today that they read that this is much also like the uh, AT&T T-Mobile deal when AT&T tried to purchase T-Mobile and there was an agreement on the table that if the sale fell through, then the AT&T still had to cough up um, some some money towards, towards T-Mobile even for coming to the table. Mm-hmm. I heard it's the same thing in this case um, that if if this deal falls through, the thing that surprised me was LinkedIn has to play pay Microsoft. Wow. Mm-hmm. I would have thought it would have been the other way around. Hmm. Huh. Maybe it's an interesting play of who addressed who. Um, LinkedIn's also suffering a lot of security issues. So I'm wondering if something in there plays into that. You know, maybe maybe there's a lot of liability that they, they've determined they can't deal with on their own anymore. Um, I don't, <laughs> but I don't know. Being paid like 200 and whatever billion as you mentioned, uh, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, I, I I don't know how that that works out. That's fuzzy. It's twenty six. It's twenty six point two billion, and it's cash over the their stock price, mm-hmm. and they overvalued the stock price by like four dollars as of today's open numbers. So, I mean, it's it's nothing to cough at, and obviously, it's 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 actually pushing stock price up. So, that mm-hmm. that's good. Mm-hmm. So I'm just kind of going through the email that the gentleman, the owner of LinkedIn, uh, the CEO, sorry, uh, is it Wiener? Sorry, Jeff Wiener, um, sent out to the employees and like some of the things that they thought Microsoft could bring to this. And one of the interesting ones is giving sponsored content customers the ability to reach Microsoft users anywhere across the Microsoft ecosystem, unlocking significant untapped inventory. So everything that Microsoft... <laughs> Hello to that. Oh, oh, LinkedIn Premium is going to come with your Office 365 subscription. That's uh, that's absolutely how it's going to work, right? Mm-hmm. I don't want your free trial. I don't. Oh, Lynda.com is going to be part of your Office 365 subscription. Yeah, yep. there you go. Yep, right there. And, and, Lynda.com. And do you want to do you want to chat with someone else on LinkedIn? Here, it'll fire up Skype. Oh, yeah. oh, okay, okay. What are we talking about? Slack has voice calls now. So does LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Technically, kind of, sort of. Um, Wow, uh, Chachi, I, I, you've been gainfully employed for a long, long time. I, are you even looking at LinkedIn or care about this? No, I'm waiting for the class action lawsuit to go through so I get paid. Oh, for the spam? <laughs> yeah. As as he checks his spam over here and congratulates somebody on their new job. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I completely just did that. A friend of a show who got a new job. Uh, but um, and the thing is, I'm not even upset about the the, the emails. I just saw, hey, you want to be part of this class action lawsuit? I'm like, yes, I like money. Chachi, Chachi, we have to we have to have a discussion with you about signing up for random class action lawsuits. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> give me all the lawsuits. Yes. Yeah. Sure. You're like, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I got two free tickets for a future concert of my choosing, um, with some restrictions due to a Ticketmaster class action lawsuit. As soon so. as you said that, I started checking my account. I was like, do I have any? <laughs> because <laughs> i was part of that wow um yeah i don't know i got my five dollar check for the uh, the uh, nintendo entertainment system price fixing in the 80s Whoa. so that was that was that was only put towards a new cartridge that might be what i bought mega man 2 with for all i know so <laughs> I, anyways uh katie is there any other uh news that came up this week that kind of popped up for you Nothing as exciting as that. I just think with the whole uh, LinkedIn thing, it's it's Microsoft just bought a whole bunch of data. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it, yeah. it's just oh my gosh! Like, can you just what what are they going to do with all that data? Because da- I mean, at this point, we all know that data. You look at Facebook, look anywhere is is the currency. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Money doesn't mean anything, but data just is all. And they it. and they mostly have that security thing kind of nailed down. They can probably help them out there too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you know. Um, I'm just kind of scanning some of the stuff that we posted. Yeah, this is a very loose show today since I knew we had some pretty, uh, two very big um, um, things. Oh, this was something local, 
I saw. It was this in this last week. Yeah, it was. Um, so for you guys in the Pittsburgh area, it was nice to see uh, over at Pittsburgh doc, nextpittsburgh.com. And actually, we're going to be part of, it, it, uh, in a way, the uh, next three days event they're doing uh, up in uh, the Allentown neighborhood uh, over at Work Hard. Going to be a little bit of an open house thing. I'm going to be uh, manning a video booth. So if you want to come down and make some video with us. I'll have more information on that some other time because it's not in front of me right now. But uh, Allegheny County, that's where we live. Uh, yeah, what? everybody here. Yeah, I know, Chach. It's about us. I live there. You do. <laughs> uh, Allegheny County shows hit hikers the way with the new Trails app. So there you go. Localized uh, uh, trails. Oh, I got to go outside. Yeah, no. you got to go outside for this. I well, maybe it's in a, VR. It's a hard pass. It's a hard, hard pass. Hard pass. Hard pass. Yeah. He's out. He's out. <laughs> So, like, I have to go outside physically walk around. No what, what are you going to do when Pokemon Go becomes a thing? You're, that's going to be how you're going to be walking around outside. I know that's that's how you get me outside. Give oh. me a video game that makes me go outside. We have like Pokemon walking trips, so so we know you don't get in any trouble. Is oh, there... I'm going to walk the entire city, entire city, <laughs> looking for all those Pokemans. Gonna gonna catch all of the Pokemans, all of them. <laughs> Mayor Peduto, do you have any Pokemans up there? <laughs> Let me in. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah, guys. It's happened. It's been a blast, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Chachi, of course, go check out the Insert Coin to Begin YouTube and the Boss Battle Show. Of course, Chachi says on the Twitter. What? You can find me there. He's Most also... Days. He's also around at various pro wrestling shows in the area for Sorgatron Media. I am. Behind the ones and twos and the camera lenses. Yeah. You know, that's a thing I do sometimes. It's it not is a bad. thing he does. It is a thing he does. Sometimes I get paid for it. What do you mean? You always Good get stuff. paid for it. You get paid for it. You are gainfully employed by Sorgatron Media. You have, a, you have a W nine or Media. you have a W nine or however we do our taxes around here. Mm -hmm. um, that's true. Also. Katie Dudas, the Scare House podcast, and uh, many, 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 many videos. She pops up in over there hosting, just keep hosting Scare House Thursday so videos. They're picnicking. They're pride festing. They're, they're, what the heck else? Are the, I, oh, by the way, follow her Snapchats because she goes to the most interesting cons <laughs> that I have ever freaking seen. I didn't know if she was at a, a horror con or, or the Gathering of the Juggalos. It was amazing. Oh, yeah. Some of them yeah, this weekend were just amazing. It was some good, good stuff. Um, but uh, go, uh, Dudzy, have fun spelling that. <laughs> I know. She, <laughs> yeah, this is this is my, um, my uh, what's it called? My, uh, uh, my, whatever you want to call it, um, my thing for, um, reminding you that whenever you claim your name on a social media platform just expect that platform to grow very large so to choose a name that is easy to remember and actually has some connection to your own name yeah you know like sps juggalo on my personal youtube account um, <laughs> public service announcement that's what it yeah is. yeah so. <laughs> yeah think about that i'm glad i'm glad i still don't have that old name floating around but uh probably my myspace probably my myspace still um john chichilla Chillatech.net. Chill on the Twitters. John Chill on the Facebook. He'll be back in Studio A for awesome next week. We'll have to we'll have to bring back the VR headsets. Oh yeah? Yeah. I have I think I have an extra Ooh. one. I got one right here, buddy. I'm good to go. No. Um <laughs> Chilltech.net. <laughs> Go check out his stuff. I need to move on because I'm, I'm done. I'm done with this show. Uh, <laughs> mentally, at this point, I give up. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I can't do this fired. anymore. I'm going to go live in V. I'm going to just just VR the uh, Wrestling Mayhem show later. So uh, <laughs> check out everything awesomecast.net. Subscribe. Tell your friends. Join us on Patreon if you are so inclined. We appreciate everybody out there that's commenting, viewing videos. Um, even companies that comment on our videos from back in October. That's fine, too. Thank you very much. I'm glad you noticed us. Uh, and uh, thank you to our awesome chat room live at SorgatronMedia.com around 6.30 to 7 uh, p.m. Eastern time we get started. So thanks to our buddies, and I'm going to move the cardboard so I can read their names. Tragar, Wheels, Crazy Kraus with his new Android phone, Aim and Bobby F. J. Town, and of course, uh, wife of the show, Missy, helping with the notes and the Twitter. It's all night long. Thank you, our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week.
This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.